This is the Mariah Report. News, pop culture, and all things Mariah Carey. Hey, welcome back. It's another episode of the Mariah Report. I'm Martin Burgess. And I'm Dan Enriquez. Here to report a thin edition a whole, of Mariah News. A whole News. lot of nothing. <laughs> <laughs> lot of, lot of nothing. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, we will catch up on what Mariah is doing, but she's not doing much. We were expecting her to be at the Billboard Awards, which we will talk about. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, there's some anniversary moments this week. But other than that, slim pickings in the Mariah world, girl. Yeah, sure is. But, you know, we can stretch out the conversation. You know how we, how we do. We stretch it out. Uh, I think we can, we'll do um, maybe some Nick Cannon talk. Mm-hmm. He's <laughs> just always in the news. Else. Yeah. Um, and what else? And we'll talk about whatever else is happening in the world nowadays, because there's a lot going on out there. Yeah. Um, but um, how's New York treating you? How is everybody over there with the COVID, the masking, the public transit, the baby formulas? Uh, I'm not up with the baby formula because I haven't, <laughs> okay. don't need to be checking don't on that. To, I don't know. Apparently, there's another surge happening here in New York. Every, people are like either half masked, masked, not masked. It's just a mess. No one cares anymore. Yeah. I mean, I think everybody's just sort of over it. Um, you know, I'm fully, not fully recovered from the COVID. I still have slight symptoms, but like I'm back operating and, you know, um, all of that jazz. So I am much mm-hmm. better. But, you know, everybody, everybody's getting it. There's a whole nother wave of the COVID going around. So mask up stay safe do what you do but you know most people it just is what it is i know you know i was telling you earlier that i haven't even been to our favorite mariah friendly bar here in new york rice bar because every time i peep in it's busy and i'm like covid must be inside oh covid is definitely over there jamming out to mariah and all the other of the day (laughs) i know so i'll keep an eye because i want to check it out because you know they are very mariah friendly and i don't hear her in the streets like i do in la so you know i need a mariah in the wilderness moment at some point yes yeah those are the moments we all live for as lambs um but yeah good old good old rise bar in new york oh i miss it so you know i haven't really been out to the bars or things here i mean a little here and there but like not much because of course it's COVID everywhere so i don't even know what the mariah friendly bars are here um but i'm sure they're out there because you hear mariah randomly in the street like I was just laying on my couch the other day and, you know, I had the windows open, sunshine, beautiful, everything like that. And I hear a little bit of like, we belong together. And I was like, girl, who is playing? We belong together. Mm-hmm. And then it's like, it was like far away. And then it was getting closer and closer. And I said, oh Lord, let me get up. I jumped up. And <laughs> as I look out my window, I see somebody driving down my street, 75 miles an hour, um, top down in a convertible, just jamming out arms all flailing like this. <laughs> and we belong together. I it's said, yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> they love the Mariah out in LA. They were feeling it. They were in the moment. They were in their emotions. And Mariah was giving it to them. Mm-hmm. And so that's it. The, uh, Mariah is beloved over here, girl. You hear her all the time. I know. That's what I miss. I miss yes. hearing it in the streets. All the time. All the time. I even think one of my neighbors is a Mariah fan. Because I hear sometimes through my other, my windows over there, I hear somebody playing Mariah, like the big energy remix, fantasy. And I've heard a couple other Mariah songs, like I Know What You Want. So we got, we got, honey, the lambs are out in these streets over here. I know who that neighbor is because remember one time I was over to record something and I thought one of our phones was on playing the playlist. (laughs) I was like, who is it? Is it me? Is it you? I know. Who's your neighbor? Yes, it was the neighbor because days and days later, weeks later, even I was like, what is that? Oh, and then I like inspected. I'm like, where is this coming from? So I actually (laughs) think it's my upstairs neighbor, though. And I really sound just sort of comes down. But yeah. Mm -hmm. But hey, I love him. I'm gonna meet him one day and be like, y'all be playing Mariah. Uh And I think it's them. But we love that. We need more of that around the world. We absolutely do. More Mariah. Um, but let's get into what Mariah has been doing. We want more Mariah, and we were hoping and anticipating that maybe she would make an appearance at this year's Billboard Music Awards, and she did not. 
No, and why were we why were we thinking that? Because Lado was performing Big Energy. It's a big hit right now. She had the opportunity to perform it on stage. Uh, and it would have been a perfect... See, my mind was already ticking as to what Mariah should have been doing and done. Uh, she should have... Do you remember when Britney... No, when Rihanna was performing S&M and Britney came up through the floor? Oh, yes, yes. Uh, whatever awards that was. That should have been what Mariah did. Lado should have started the song. Mariah... Pause the music. Mariah comes up through the floor, go into fantasy. Yes. It would have been a huge been moment. It would have been fabulous. Everybody would have gagged. Gagged. The crowd would have went, went wild. Berserk. Um, but yeah, no, we, we did not get that. I was thinking that she would just make like an appearance on the on the big screen behind Lotto, but we uh-huh. didn't even get that. So we got nothing, honey. So, Sit. all right. I mean, Mariah did give like a congratulatory um, tweet to Lotto and said, oh, you know, congratulations on your big night, which is sweet. Listen, I know. Listen, if Mariah can't film it in the basement, she's not doing it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> she's not showing up. No, she's not leaving the house, girl. Uh-huh. The cases of COVID are rising. It's true. She's not it's leaving true. The house. She's not leaving the house. Absolutely not. True. Um, so we missed that moment of possible Mariah-ness, but that's all right because I'm, I know Mariah has a lot in store for us coming up later in the year. And that's just going to be, you know, we're going to sound like a broken record over here at the Mariah Report. She has I something know. coming up. Something's coming up. She's going to give us something. She's going to give us something. So we just well, have to I, wait. I think what's frustrating is that this is a missed opportunity. She could be out here promoting the song. It could just be a real big hit for her as well. That is true. That is true. Now, I, um, and you know, I, well, the other thing <laughs> is we, we also need a music video for it because the yeah. song is starting to like, you know, dwindle a little bit, at least on the Billboard Hot 100 chart. It's still in the top 10, which is great, but mm-hmm. there needs to be a little bit more momentum. Like it should be rising, not falling, especially because it's very much like a summer song, mm-hmm. you know? Um, and everybody could be driving down in their convertibles, bopping to it. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't know. It's just, I, I feel like it's not happening. Same. That's all I can say. <laughs> I know. I know. But I don't know. Yeah. Well, it, it is like... what it is. Well, word on the street was that they did film the video. Apparently that exists. And maybe the video did not turn out well. I just don't know why they would still be holding on to it if they had it. You know what I mean? Like, now is the time. We had the Billboard Music Awards. Now is the time to drop the video. Mm -hmm. But but here's the other thing I think that maybe us as lambs forget about. Lotto already has a video for Big Energy. Mm -hmm. She does. So maybe they don't want to take from that, or maybe they don't want to i don't know oversaturate um the video market i don't know (laughs) but there is a video for big energy so maybe we're just you know whatever hoping and praying that something will come when nothing is going to come i know i don't know it was was, listen it was a letdown it was a letdown it was a letdown because we're thirsty for more mariah Uh exactly Um, it would have been good to see mariah with those people like Sean, um, Diddy was hosting it. Yes, so, you know, old friend Diddy from the Butterfly era. Yes, of course. Oh, long would have been a friends. moment. Long time yes. friends. I did see that he was hosting, and I tuned in and out of the Billboard Music Awards. I did see when Lotto performed, and I saw like maybe one or two other things. Um, but I saw um, P Diddy or Sean Puffy, whatever they're calling him now. Mariah doesn't even know. You mm-hmm. see how she was calling him in the master class? She was like, we don't even know what we're calling him. Yeah. Um, and he was like, I think he was trying to sell like vodka or tequila or something on the like in the middle of the show. And I was like, no, I can't watch this. Click. I got to come back to it because I'm like, what are you doing? This is not uh-huh. how you host the show. You don't sell your liquor. Like, not even as a joke. Like, that to me is just, there's a time a and cheesy. place for that. I know. And it's not here. Like, that That to me sort of cheapens the whole thing of it. Like, this is the Billboard Music Awards. Mm-hmm. And you're selling your liquor? Get out of here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
But if Mariah was there selling Black Irish, I would be A-OK with that. Oh, fine. Yes, totally fine. <laughs> oh, absolutely. For sure. Hey, what about those Black Irish chocolate bars that were out for Mother's Day? Did you see those? I did not see those anywhere. I saw them online, but I did not Same. see them out in any stores because, you know, there's two or three stores around the neighborhood here um, yeah. that uh, sell Black Irish. No, nothing, absolutely nothing out there in the they streets. They look cute. But I want to know, are they just like regular chocolate or Black Irish chocolate? Ooh, I don't know. Like that, oh, I would love a salted caramel chocolate Black Irish chocolate bar. Right. Oh my goodness. I don't know. So that's the thing. They have these promo items, but like who's getting these promo items? If the if the lambs aren't getting them, I've not seen one lamb who got them. I all I saw was like a picture. And I'm mm-hmm. like, well, who is getting these cherished items? And they're probably just crumpling up that wrapper and throwing it away. Mm-hmm. I, oh yeah, for sure. Yes. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I wonder if maybe someone's selling them on eBay. Probably not, because I'm sure somebody would have told me. Right. But either way, another missed little opportunity there. Like, you should be able to get that, like, you know, go to your local liquor store and just buy it. Like, it should just be there, like, next to the Black Irish. Mm-hmm. Right? But apparently it was just a promo giveaway for Mother's Day. But it was cute. It was cute. Now, are you, are you still buying Black Irish now that we are approaching the end of the cold season? Or have um, approached? Uh, you know what? I am not. Um because it's pretty pricey. You got to get that on sale, girl. <laughs> oh, it's back to full price. <laughs> it's back to full price. And I'm like, girl, I'm going to, I'll get you next round, girl. <laughs> uh-huh. So, no, I haven't had uh, Black Irish in a minute. So, yeah, same. Not um, since the holiday I, season. Yeah. I mean, that's just for me, that's what what it like is but i did see that uh rollingstone.com had mm. uh, given a little summertime recipe for black irish for the white chocolate about black irish and they're like muddle some berries put some ice and and make it a summertime drink and i was like girl i don't know about that that's still it's still got like the thickness to it like the you know what i mean in the throat yeah. i'm like girl i don't know if i want that for the summer for the summertime i know I mean, ice is just not going to do it. But whatever, maybe it's good. I don't know. I didn't try it. Some people like that. Exactly. So, so I love them. That's for them. I love that for them. I love that for Mariah and, you know, the Black Irish. We love that. But I don't know. I'll sit yeah. mine over ice during the winter months. Right. I think that's much more appropriate. Yes. <laughs> well, speaking of Rolling Stones, so they were running an article, and in it there was a blip about how Mariah has the masterclass out, but they mentioned in the Rolling Stone that she's working on the new album for summertime. It's going to be a busy summer for her. Yes. So we're starting to get trickles of information in the press now. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, all I can say is we just got to wait and see. But I mean, well, summertime summer's... is literally right around the corner. Around, I took the words out of my mouth. It's, it's in like two weeks. It starts. It's June. Soon. Yeah. June is the official start of summer mm-hmm. because that's, you know, gay pride month. So now summer is in full effect. Yeah. And here in America, isn't the kickoff for summer Memorial Day, which is this weekend coming up? Oh. Um, or next weekend? Or soon? Yes. I think you're correct. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yes. That's... Approaching. I so summertime is here. Things. I forget what that there's like those holidays that sort of like signify the start of summer season and the end of summer season. But yeah, mm-hmm. you're right. You're right. So we so should we'll be see. getting stuff, I guess. We shall see. Um, but um, I w- just before we move on to other Mariah news, uh, the Billboard magazine or Billboard, not Billboard magazine, Billboard Music Awards, uh-huh. um, Big Lotto was there. And I will say, like, even though Mariah didn't perform, Lotto was on the red carpet, like shouting out Mariah and like praising her the entire time. So like if you caught any of the interviews or any of the clips online of Big Lotto on the carpet, she was all up for Mariah, and I do love that. And she was in a Mariah-licious kind of gown. Very much so, very much so. Because there was a moment of fake photo going around. Somebody photoshopped Mariah's face onto Lado's body, and it was a good, it was a swindle. I was like, <laughs> is that real? Good one. <laughs> I mean, that can't be real. But it was very 
convincing because Lotto did have like a Mariah look happening. Yes. Um, and if you look at the photo that was photoshopped, it is something that Mariah would wear. And it instantly brought me back to like one of her American Idol looks. Remember when she wore that black gown floor length, but it had like some sort of like a bustier or like torso thing to it. I don't know what you would call it. Okay. I'd have to pull up the photo. Like but I was like, this this is very similar. So it was uh-huh. giving me Mariah flashbacks. But like, you know, Big Lotto was wearing like, you know, the more modern version of it. You know, the, mm-hmm. the young version of it. Mm-hmm, but, mm-hmm. Yeah. So it was totally giving me all of that. So I loved it. And then also, um, you know, Mariah being a legend would have been great to have her there. Because we had some big legends and icons over there at the Billboard Music Awards. Um Janet Jackson gave the Icon Award to Mary J. Now, yes. could you imagine Janet, Mariah, Mary J? In a photo? I would gag. That, yeah, that would be gaggy. Janet looked great. Janet looked amazing. Oh, she was giving moments. She was giving moments. everything. You know, Janet's out there doing it. I know. She's, having, she's having like a comeback revival moment. Yes. Well, you know, Janet, she'll never go. She will never go. She's mm-hmm. out there doing it. I think she was just performing somewhere. I can't remember where, but I saw some clips. I was like, girl, you better get it. She she don't care nothing about no COVID. She out there dancing, girl. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm not mad at it. I'm not mad at it. <laughs> I know. I know. It's disappointing. I love how we went back to the Billboard Awards and Mariah not being there. Because it was such a letdown. She should have been there. I know. What's she good. doing? Because She's at home in the basement making music or something. <laughs> and by the basement, we mean like the butterfly lounge. The butterfly lounge. I mean, just yeah. joking. <laughs> Her basement is like bigger than my entire apartment. So yeah. calm down. Um, but yeah, no, it would have been good because, you know, as I was flipping back and forth from the Billboard Music Awards, um, I didn't know who any of these people were. And to have, like, you know, I know Mary J and Janet and, like, stuff like that. But, like, to have, like, more of these, you know, long-term legendary acts show up and then have all, like, the newer people there as well. That's, like, a, you know, a wide range of, you know, generations of talent. So it would Mm -hmm. have been good for Mariah to be there in, you know, good company. Yeah. uh, You know, so I don't know. But, but she's just, at home. She ain't trying to get the COVID. I know. I hope whatever she's planning is big and good for us. Well, I also hope that, like, you know, I think ever since COVID, us as lambs, we have missed a lot of opportunities that maybe Mariah could have planned or could have or maybe already had planned. Like, for instance, I'm still real mad that we never got a book tour mm-hmm. because everybody does a book tour. Um, the whole like promotional thing around the rarities, she would have been on more shows. I'm sure she would have probably done more concerts, more performances, just everything. You know what I mean? Like, I think for the past two years, we've missed out on a lot of things. And I think a lot of it has to do with COVID, unfortunately. So hopefully when Mariah does release this next set of music or whatever project she's working on, that she'll be able to be more out and about and have like, you know, connection with the fans. Hopefully. Yeah. yeah. But you never know. I know. We need more Mariah, more Mariah. And we're going to keep saying that because she's giving us nothing right now. So <laughs> I know, <laughs> but it is what it is. Um, <clears throat> Now, I normally don't like to talk about Nick Cannon on this program because he's just too much, but we got nothing else to talk about. So let's talk about (laughs) a little bit of Nick Cannon. The bucket is empty. We have got to scrape the bottom now. (laughs) We're doing the best we can with what we got. But he's out there making headlines again about um, um, all these babies he's having. Okay, there is a rumor going around that there's like three more coming. Have you heard this rumor? Well, I wouldn't be surprised. There's I would a tweet, believe that rumor. There's a tweet going around saying Nick has no chill. There's three babies coming. Oh, no. Well, see, now I didn't hear that rumor, but um, I did hear that he was out there saying that he's not having no more babies and he is going to get a vasectomy. 
see, this is why he's just such trash to me because there's no other headlines for him about having babies, not having babies, or Mariah. Exactly. And that's always my thing as well. Like, if you're going to do something like that, that good, do you all of that. But why do you have to turn it into a headline? Like, why do you have to like make that news? That's your personal business. Like, that's your medical records. Yes, that's your medical records. Keep it to yourself, girl. Nobody needs to know your business like that. But again, he's turning all this baby's stuff into headlines for him because he has nothing else. Mm -hmm. But don't get me started. And I also heard a rumor that he has like some new album coming out and that it's going to have a song with Brandy on it. (laughs) Really? (laughs) I was like, no, girl, no. Do you think she would? Probably. Brandy, because she... (laughs) She probably would. <laughs> I love Brandy. Do not get me wrong, but Brandy will sing. She will sing for a paycheck. She will. She will. <laughs> and she should. And she should because her voice is incredible. But yeah, if you give her a paycheck, she's singing, honey. She is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, no. But apparently he has an album coming out, I think, um, within the next week or two and it's like or maybe it's like a mixtape i'm not quite sure but i think it's called raw and b <laughs> raw and b raw and b and that's that's what i heard i don't know oh like r and b yeah like r and b but raw and b oh <laughs> i don't know anything about it but that's what that's what i saw but don't get me uh talking about nobody um, but, um, it's okay. speaking of Nick Cannon, I, you know, because I, uh, am still sort of recovering from COVID I've been at home watching a lot of Netflix and I was watching this documentary mm. about this doctor, the documentary I th- think is called our father. And it's this doctor who was, um, impregnating women, women, or like uh, fertilizing them with his own, um, specimen unknowingly to the women right Uh and so he had like a million kids and the women had no idea like they were like you know getting in vitro because whatever this reason that reason donating whatever who knows but this doctor ended up having like you know a hundred kids you know and um the kids eventually found out because you know they went to the 23 and me moments or the ancestry.coms which we love a good ancestry.com yeah um and they were like, oh, why do I have 7,000 brothers and sisters? And then they figured it out that it was the doctor. It was this whole big scandal. But one of the kids was like, um, and this happened like way, way long time ago, like in the 70s. One of the kids was like, oh, we think that he might, um, let's say, subscribe to this ideology of, I think it's called quiverful and it's like a Christian thing because this doctor would have like Bible quotes all in his office and stuff. And he's very, very like Bible heavy, very, you know, Jesus, the Lord, all of that kind of stuff, you know, spread. They're your always the ones. They're always the ones. And apparently it's like a big thing and it's called quiverful. Um, okay. And so, of, of course, I'm Googling it. And, of course, I'm like, this sounds like Nick Cannon. This is what he suffers from. Because we know that he loves, you know, the Lord, the Bible, just as, you know, anybody can. And, you know, same with Mariah. But I'm like, he read into that little, you know, quote or whatever a little too much. And now he's just having kids everywhere. And I think that's it. So, so that someone got to get him into therapy to get the quiverful out of him. Uh huh. That makes sense. I'm glad we diagnosed. Yes. Nick like Cannon. I didn't know it was a thing, but it's always like, okay, well, where do you get this mentality from? Where the you Bible. think that it's okay? And of of course, it's the Bible. Uh-huh. It's the craziness. So I think he um, has a little bit of that going on. That book causes so much trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Look what it's gonna do. That old book. That dusty old book causing too much drama. We're trying to That's enjoy our Mariah Carey music, and there's Nick on the side, reading the Bible, having all these babies, ruining our reputation. Yeah, no, I'm I'm sick of it. I'm done with it. I'm done with it. But yeah, uh, Nick Cannon. Hopefully, you know he'll get his stuff together, and mm-hmm. you know stop having all these damn kids. It's weird. Right. Strange. It is weird. 
But anyways, if you want to look at the documentary over there on the Netflix, Our Father, crazy. Okay. Um, All right, what else uh, do we have to talk about? Well, I think we should talk about some anniversary moments. Oh, yeah. So Vision of Love had an anniversary. It's been 32 years. Yes. Yes. The moment that started it all. Uh Uh-huh. 32 years ago, Vision of Love was released. I, I just don't know. Where would we be without without that 32 years ago? Who would have known that she would have come into, you know, be this worldwide icon? I know. But it, my mind goes straight back to two years ago when it was the 30th anniversary and the pandemic had just started. MC30 was emerging as a thing. We've had some good moments with this anniversary. Oh, for sure. For sure. I mean, this is good. We're getting into like decades long career here. I mean, this is pretty iconic. Nobody still is doing what Mariah is doing this many years later, you know, or few people are doing what she's doing this many years later. I mean, it's just, it's amazing. And from the get go, this song, now the song came out in May, the album, I believe came out in June and Mm -hmm. then The song didn't even hit number one until, I think, I think August. I don't have my my notes with me, but um, yeah, something like that had happened. So it it was a slow grower, but when it hit, it hit big. And obviously, we know what happened after that. All of her singles went number one. Her first five singles went number one, but it did take a couple of weeks to sort of catch on. but that's all right. That's all right. Because look where we are now. Yeah. Well, also, are we, okay, so has the song been tainted by, you know how Mariah was telling us about how when she first got her deal with, with Sony or whatever, but she was working with Ben Margulies and he swindled her into that contract? Oh, well, I mean, it's that the beginning of that era. Debacle, yes. Now, um, I don't think the song has been tainted by that because, I mean, it's just so amazing. And if we're going to taint one song for that debacle, we'd have to taint her all entire first 10 years of her career because I guess you're right. money off the back of all of those things. Yeah, you're right. Girl, I can't even read that mo- that moment in the book anymore because I get real heated over it. I <laughs> so know. I can only imagine what Mariah thinks about it. It's wild. Um, But listen, her and Ben did make good music together. Like we got from the rarities, we got Here We Go Around Again, Mm -hmm. um, which is a bop to me. It's a bop. That's a bop. Mm -hmm. So I'm down for it. And, you know, listen, it is what it is. Again, Mariah survived it. She's still here. She's still with us, still doing her thing. So Mm -hmm. here we go. I know. Well, another anniversary. Another anniversary. Now, are there any favorite versions of Vision of Love that you like? Like, do you, when you, I know you're not like, you know, old school debut era Mariah, but like when you do listen to like a Vision of Love moment, what do you usually go to? Okay, this might be a little controversial. I actually love the version live in Jamaica when she's, you know, A little Listen. wobbly on the stage, but it cracks me up. It's a funny version to me. So that to me is a funny, entertaining version of it. That is a funny, entertaining version of it because she she sings it really. She goes out of the box of what she normally does. And she does yeah. riffs and things like that that are very different and that we never get to hear her do. So, I mean, we definitely can put that in the uh, amazing performance moments. Well, for me, that, like that's just what I... <laughs> <laughs> I just like to laugh at it a little bit, but also enjoy the song. Otherwise, all the other performances are very good that she does of it. All of them are really good. I mean, from the from the very first to up until now, I mean, she's always been hitting that song out of the park every time she does it. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, but but I will say, I prefer sort of you know from 1995 on. Because those first couple ones, like, let's say, you know, um, the Grammy Awards, amazing performance. But I feel like she still had some growing to do vocally. Mm. And when you listen to, like, something like BET, um, the BET special from 2005, where she has, like, that 
beautiful like you know fullness to her voice i feel mm-hmm. like that fits the song so much better than like you know 20 year old mariah singing it you know I, that's just me personally so i like sort of like those types of things so bet that's my that's my jam with the straight hair mm-hmm. love it absolutely that's a good one it. that's a good one well we both I mean, picked like later versions of it Exactly, because I think that's like she I think she feels it better when she performs it now. You know what I mean? Or like in, you know, recent, more recent years. Well, it's funny because I kind of don't think of it as a Mariah Carey song in a weird way, because it's so it was so long ago. I think of like the newer stuff as Mariah Carey music. (laughs) I don't know how to explain that. But it just seems like a that's an old bitch. It almost sounds like a cover song now when she does it. Well, and that's okay because you know Mariah does good covers. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's like that. Oh, it is literally where it all began. Mm-hmm. Like it's like before, and you know, thirty thirty two years of a song. It's had so many different sort of moments in time. You know, like even um, the Madison Square Garden performance. Mm-hmm. Absolutely amazing. Mm-hmm. But that is very different than, you know, the performance from, you know, like I was saying, the BET. Like, there's these different iterations of it, and you see how it just grows into, like, a whole new thing. And she sings it so differently now than she did back then. So it's almost like a – it almost is like a cover. It's like a – it's a mature. Just had a flash into my mind. Yeah. Do we want her touching it in the butter- Butterfly Lounge? I mean, I think Mariah can touch any of the songs because she can <laughs> give, she can give a little something new. Sure, why not? Yeah, I'll take anything. Don't forget the long lost video where she's in the panties and bra on the bed. Oh yes, yes, that's right. The, so we we all know the iconic video of her like on the swing or in like the big windowsill, mm-hmm. um, but there was a, a a different version filmed prior to that, and Tommy Matola said she was too sexy in it. I know. So they scrapped it, and now who knows where it is? Lost in the vault somewhere. Yeah. Hopefully, one day we'll find it. Someone has to go digging and find that vault. Like, I wonder how, like, who keeps track of all that stuff? Like, the record label? Like, honey, we need to call somebody. They do. A friend of mine was telling me how it works because they worked at the label. And and everything gets archived in the vault. And so there's people down there, like, keeping records of it. And you have to go request to access particular things. But they have, like, for example, Elvis. They have, like, all the recording sessions. So they'll write down who he is. Like, oh, recording session... XYZ, Elvis Presley, song, take one, go. They have all those like little note cards. They have all the tape. They have all the records down there. So I'm sure there's tapes of the original video archived somewhere. I mean, there has to be. There just has mm-hmm. to be. Um, and then also just thinking about, you know, 32 years ago, all of that music videos and things, they were all done on film, like actual Physical. film. Like yeah. none of it was like you know, digital or any of that kind of stuff. So there has to be a film cartridge (laughs) with all of that in there somewhere. I know. Can you imagine back in the day, like filming a music video and you're like, oh, we ran out of film. (laughs) We hold hold everything. We need more film. Like, that's crazy. No, you had to. You had to like stop, reset the tapes, put a new tape in. Yeah, it was absolutely. a thing. I mean, I guess nowadays you would equate that to, oop, <laughs> let me plug it in. I, where's the charger or something? Yeah, but exactly. Still, like to like load film into a video into a camera is like that's a process. You know? Yeah, and then you have to like hope it worked, right? Oh my gosh! And just think that was only thirty two years ago. I mean, I not even because I would say I would say up until probably like what what do you think was the last Mariah music video filmed on film? It was probably Excuse me. something um, glitter. Good probably. question. Or even maybe charm bracelet. I don't know. No. Um, I'm thinking about Boy, I Need You. You know when they were in Tokyo with cameras? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Do you think that was film or digital? I don't know. I don't know. I'd have to go back and look. 
it'd be interesting to see where that major shift change definitely in the 2000s though because i think uh I, I think heartbreaker for sure was on film right yes yes it had to be because it was still back in the day and you know when they were filming stuff back in the day on film that's what like rose the cost of these videos like because you know it. was one of the most expensive videos of its time mm -hmm. because it costs a lot of money to film yeah because you have to do yeah. multiple takes over and over yeah. on the film yeah. And then you have to get the film developed and, you know, film itself, you know, all the work that goes into just handling the film, the actual film. It's crazy. It's so Gosh, much easier think, nowadays. Do you think uh, the Emancipation of Mimi's were on tape? I don't videos? know. I think that, I mean, it could be, could be, you know, I might have to go back and like, watch the making of the videos back then and see what kind of cameras they had. Yeah. It probably could. I mean, I would say, I would say definitely it was either glitter charm bracelet or Mimi where the transition was. Cause when I was in school and I went to sc for school for film and television production, I think, th I think they were making the transition. So I think like, you know, a lot of like, you know, the big movies and things started making that transition. Mm -hmm. So it had to be the early 2000s. I would say by 2005, I would say a production for the level of Mariah Carey music video, like We Belong Together, probably was digital. Hmm. That was probably one of her first digitals. I mean, we could probably go back and just see just what the formats are on YouTube. You know what I mean? To see oh, yeah. what had to be digitized, digitized, and what didn't. You're right. You can you can you can sort of tell what, what had to get HD'd. To be, exactly, exactly. Because you know anything digital is like super easy to do. Yeah. Now, but like if it was film, so all those '90s music videos mm -hmm. had to be like seriously, like done up. But. So fascinating talk. Fascinating. We should need to get somebody who knows about this stuff talking about this with us. I'm, I want to know what Mariah knows about this stuff. I'm sure I'm she sure knows. I'm sure she knows a lot. Because I'm course. sure they were like, oh, Mariah, we're using digital cameras for this one. She yeah. would have been like, what? Like, what's that? What's happening? You know yeah. what I mean? Uh -huh. Or like, you know, think of the music videos that she even directed, like Fantasy. She's over there with the film canister. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so interesting. So interesting. But anyway, but yeah. Vision of Love. Vision of Love, 32 years. All digital it's now. An, it's an annual event now. <laughs> anniversary of Vision of Love. I know. I mean, I, here's the thing. Every year and every uh, time we look at like a favorite song or something, it's always, you know, adding another year to the anniversary. You know, Butterfly uh, 25 is coming. I know. Right around the corner. So... Hmm. Wild. I mean, time is ticking. Time is ticking. Um, but yeah, well, we love Vision of Love. Yeah. Well, speaking of time ticking, we're ticking towards the end of the show. But before we go, we want to remind everybody that if you could leave us a review on Apple Podcasts, it really helps the show a lot. It does make an impact. Um, it helps us get chart traction, which then helps other people discover us. And, you know, it's a snowball effect. And all it takes is a few moments of your time. And we love to read them out here on the show. And we have a brand new one, Dan, that I didn't even oh. tell you about yet. Oh, I can't wait to hear. Yeah. So it's from Alfonso here in the United States. And he says, y'all better go off. I literally searched Mariah Carey in the search bar and clicked on the top option. You guys are clearly lambs. And, it's, uh, and honestly, it's hard to find other lambs. Listening to this podcast makes me feel like we're just hanging out, having a splash and talking all things Mariah. And I love it. Keep doing what you're doing. Love from New York City. All right, New York City Thanks. Lamb. Thanks, Alfonso. Yes, we appreciate that. Uh, yeah. yeah, just type in. You type in Mariah Carey on the little podcast, or we'll pop up. We're right, right there. there. The Mariah Report. And we have a lot of episodes out there, so you could choose from a lot. You have a lot to listen to. <laughs> exactly. So that's how you can help us out listening. Hit uh, subscribe on your favorite podcast app, or follow, rather. Uh, leave an Apple review that makes a big difference. And sharing it with your friends makes a big difference, please. The, you have no idea how much it helps on our end. 
Yes, and we appreciate it. Um, but thank you for listening, and yes. we'll be back reporting more Mariah news next and week. Thank you to yeah, thank you to our Patreon supporters who support us over there. This week, you're not getting an after show; you're actually getting a pre show. This week. a pre show moment, mixing it up a little. So head over to patreon.com slash the Mariah report for that and support the show for five bucks a month. And that's the wrap. Bye. <laughs> Bye. The Mariah report is produced and edited by Dan Enriquez and Martin Burgess. Hosted by Dan Enriquez and Martin Burgess. Graphics created by Sean Mark. Theme music created by E. Reezy B. Thank you to the listeners who support the show on Patreon. If you'd like to show your support or for more information, visit the show notes in your podcast app.